September 12, 2019, 6.30 p.m. Agenda, call to order. City, sir. <laughs> Mayor, Mayor, let the record stand that all members are present with the exception of Alderman Cole. And Amber Danker, our older woman, is joining us via teleconference. Or video conference, excuse me. Our business of twofold tonight. One of them is a public hearing. You will not hear us talk or even talk about what's happening here. Our job here is to hear you. And that's all we're going to do. We will not answer any questions or anything. We're just going to hear you. And then when that's over with, we'll go to the second one. Now, in the public hearing, I'll make three things. First call, anyone who wants to speak walks up there, gives your name and your address. You have three minutes, and Michael or Mike will uh, call you after three minutes if you go over that time. And then I'll go. Second call, third call, and then I'll close the hearing at that time. So at this time, it is 6.35, It is 6.38. I'm coming out of the regular board of meeting, and I am going into public hearing. Number one, hold a public hearing regarding the proposed ad valerium tax rate for the 2019 tax year to help fund the proposed fiscal year 2020 operating budget for the village of Salado. Don? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mayor, members of the board, very quickly before you take public comment, just to let uh, uh, you and members of the public refresh your memory of uh, what is being proposed right now. Uh, the mayor submitted his budget and, and the budget that he submitted as the starting point for discussion uh, for the Board of Aldermen in this budget process is a budget that uh, calls for a property tax rate of 0.6135 cents per $100 valuation. Uh, that is basically up to the rollback rate, um, and the rollback rate being, as I mentioned, 6135. Our current tax rate is 0.6276. The reason you have a disparity where the proposed rate is actually lower than that is because of the increased property values that we saw this last year. But again, we'd like to stress we are proposing an increase, a rollback rate of 6.135, 6.135. Uh, is what was proposed with the mayor's budget. Uh, the way that equates is it equates on the MO side, a uh, tax rate of 0 0.2070 for 100 cents, or excuse me, $100 valuation, and a debt service rate of 0 0.4065 for $100 valuation, again, for a total of 0.6135. As you know, there have been discussions at, at the board uh, in a couple of meetings about the idea of coming back in and trying to lower uh, at least the debt service portion of this rate to lessen the burden on the taxpayer. Uh, we have dollars available through our impact fee collections to go towards that. That's really one of the primary purposes of, of that is to go towards debt reduction. And so we budgeted uh, as an alternative to the proposed rollback rate. Uh, we've gone in and budgeted some money from that uh, impact fee collection fund uh, and coupled those with some money that was already set aside and allocated to go towards debt reduction in the general fund. Uh, and with those two funds calculated together, uh, we see that we've brought the debt service rate down from 0.4065 to 0.3682, and that coupled with the M&O rate of 0.2070 gives you an alternative a tax rate of 0.5752, which is in effect the effective tax rate, uh, which is that tax rate which generates the same amount of revenue as last year uh, with this year's values. So with that said, that's before you, Mayor, your budget called for a tax rate of 0.6135. Uh, the alternative that's been put on the table at this point is, is an effective tax rate of 0.5752. Uh, again, the board will discuss and finalize the tax rate at their next meeting on the 19th. So it's before you for public hearing and comments. First call to anyone who would like to speak. Second call for anyone who would like to speak. Third call for anyone who would like to speak. <laughs> yeah, that, a former teacher hates a vacuum of sound. Uh, Linda Reynolds, 507 Santa Rosa. I would just like, uh, hopefully, someone can clarify uh, for me by asking questions probably next week when you discuss the budget. 
uh, I, I really couldn't read and follow the lines very well on the one that was published. Uh, I am getting older, I can see that now. Uh, but, uh, and on the reimbursement for the sewer line that's been extended or is going to be extended to Mr. Rosamond's Royal Street land uh, and our development. And, uh, and then I realized, I don't think they've even come into town. They haven't been annexed yet. But I thought there was going to be a line put out there and we were gonna pay for it and he's going to reimburse. So I wondered, I'm hoping some alderman will find out for us whether we've done that work and the taxpayers paid for that sewer line and we just haven't been reimbursed yet. So, and then the other uh, thing I'm wondering if we're being reimbursed for, I think there's a line on the sanctuary land that uh, maybe, I, I don't know, maybe we had to pay for that. I remember way back when uh, Kim Faust was here, there was a discussion about who was gonna pay for that line from the, from the sewer plant uh, to Royal Street and or to the exit, wherever the sewer is gonna exit. And I'm just wondering if we're gonna be reimbursed or maybe we have been reimbursed already. Uh, and those are just two financial things I couldn't figure out in the budget. So I'm hoping somebody will bring it up besides me. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak may do so as it's time. I do want to speak, but I need to ask a, a question of clarification that probably your village administrator can answer. I know that when you adopt, when you propose a tax rate, you cannot go above that tax rate, you can go below it. But from what I under, understand by looking at this, the uh, effective tax, tax rate of 5752 uh, would be a um, tax rate of 20.7 MNO and uh, 37 or 3682 INS. If the village were to maintain the proposed tax rate of uh, 6135, and continue to take those um, impact fees and the other money dedicated to debt service, could it then uh, put the, rem the remaining uh, switch over from INS to MNO? Can you do that when you adopt the total tax rate? So that the MNO side would be actually uh, quite a bit higher than than it is under the proposed tax rate. I know that you're at the roll. You're at the rollback rate in both scenarios. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you're you're proposing a cap. You're proposing basically the maximum cap and rollback for these two deals. Okay. So what what you would do in your situation would be if, if the concept is you want to put more money in the M and O, which I, is that kind of what you're wanting to do? What what I'm suggesting is that at the rollback rate you would adopt uh, the rollback rate as proposed. It is lower than the current tax rate and that but don't be the misled. increase. Yes, don't be misled, it is a tax increase. Yes, I understand. Okay. But the increase in uh, tax money would be dedicated to I and to MNO for street maintenance and earmarked for street maintenance. I think under the current budget and every budget we've had, the street. You cannot. But you cannot move money that you're raising from debt service into. That was my question. You can't move money from debt service is debt service. Okay, it's set. And it's right. The reality of it is, whatever tax rate you set for debt service, is dedicated to go to debt service, and the remainder goes to M and O. Right, but if you, that's what I'm saying. If if because you're able to move. Uh, you can retire some of the debt because of you could put more, you impact could, you fees could put, you and could other. More, you could put more impact fee money into that to retire that, to bring the to bring the debt service rate lower and remove the burden on the general fund and use that money you had budgeted towards debt retirement in the general fund and, and move that into the general fund for regular purposes. You have the ability to do that, which 
which I think is kind of where you're headed, maybe, and that is that's about thirty thousand dollars more that you pour back into the streets, roads, whatever. But you're going to take that extra thirty thousand dollars out of the impact fee fund that's got to come from somewhere. My concern is that the INS, uh, excuse me, the MNO part of of the tax rate is much smaller than every other city's MNO tax rate. And you are, if you roll back, that's the wrong word, if you cut the tax rate back to the effective tax rate, you cripple yourself in the future. There was an incredible amount of growth of property values. Uh, quite a bit of it was new property values. Some of it was improvement of, of uh, existing property appraisals. And as you recall at the last meeting, we pointed out and raised a caution flag about taking it down to the effective rate, but that was the desire to try to bring right. the debt service rate down a little bit. And so right. that's, that's what's done. But yeah, it, it is. And I think that the thing to understand is we will be classified, so you know, as not a small city in next year's tax law implementation. We've received word that we're going to be classified as a regular city, which means the 3.5% cap is going to apply. So that you, you are, by taking it down to the effective rate, you're, you're, what you're doing is you're setting the bar lower. And that's what we talked about at last week's meeting. You're setting that bar lower from a starting point. Um, with the new tax year coming in, and the, excuse me, the new tax laws coming in, that's why you're seeing a lot of the cities in this area push to the rollback this year because of the uncertainty about what they're going to encounter next year when they get cut to 3.5%. Yes, you have the ability to bank a portion of that 3.5% if you don't use it, and that's what some cities will try to do. And we have the ability to do that with the added growth coming in, uh, but that's, again, for future years, not this coming year. But your point is your point is taken well in the standpoint that you need to be cautious how low you take that rate, the total tax rate down, because it's going to impact your starting point next year. Because what it looks like to me is it's going to end up being a $0.05 cent cut in the tax rate that will mostly impact in uh, the INS side, not, excuse me, mo mostly impact in the long run the maintenance and operation side in that if you roll, if you go to the effective tax rate this year, then your effective tax rate next year will be the same amount. And even though property values have grown, new property values have come in, you still you still don't have the ability to collect more money to pay for roads. Bigger, and, and our budget is woefully short on roads. The bigger, and if the bigger, there's a way to inject some, some m and into the tax rate, this is the time to do it because next year you're, you're going to be crippled to the 3.5% as a rollback rate. The bigger risk you run greater than that is the risk of another significant hit in property appraisal. I will tell you when you talk to the appraisal district, they're very quick to caution you that that could happen again. Right. But e even with high increases in property appraisals, as a single taxpayer, you can never be taxed at more than 10% of that increase. If your home goes up 30%, you are taxed that year on 10% of that uh, increase, of a third of that increase. The following year, they can add another 10%, regardless of whether your home goes up or down. So this is, I think, an opportune time to get some money for the roads. That's my whole point, Alderman, and I hope you consider it. Thank you. We have had the third call. Is there anyone else? Because after this, we come out of the hearing. Anyone else want to speak? There will be no other opportunity but now if you'd like to say something. The hearing is closed. The time is seven nine nine minutes uh, nine minutes till seven. Well, we're going back into the Mayor, board just, of just just as a reminder, very quickly, and that is you're scheduled to approve budget and tax rate next Thursday. Yes, I know. Yes, and that's why you're not hearing us talk tonight. It's because this was for citizens of Salado to come and talk about it and offer their expression. So that's the reason we did this. 
I have until the end of this month to turn in the budget, not me, but uh, Don. And what will happen next week? Whatever happens next week, there's no more time. We have to put the budget in. That's why we had a special call meeting tonight. Okay. We're back into the main session now. Discuss some possible action. Discuss and consider possible action authorizing the village administrator to enter into an agreement with a professional lighting contractor to work on the two gateway signs located on Interstate 35 within the corporate limits of the village of Salado and to amend the fiscal year 2019 operating budget to reflect the cost for such work. Don? Mayor, we're going to move this item to next Thursday's meeting. You're going to wait till next Thursday yes. to talk this? Okay. We're waiting on some final numbers. Okay. And before you adjourn the meeting, just a quick clarification uh, for, for Ms. Uh, Ms. Reynolds' edification. The city did not and has not installed the line to Bears subdivision. So there's no, re no problem. There's no reimbursement needed at this point. And, and the sanctuary one? And the sanctuary line, the sanctuary line that you reference is actually part of the city's collection system. That's the force man, that's ours, yes. No, the gravity line you're asking about. The 2,750 feet of gravity line. That is the force main that goes into the lift station, or that goes to the plant. We've not installed, we've not installed any sewer line for the sanctuary. It's on the engineering plan. We've not installed any sewer line for the sanctuary. The line that is in place right now is the force main that goes to our treatment. Do I hear a motion for adjournment, please? So moved.